Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. This satisfying animation here, I'm going to show you step by step how to make it in Blender. You can see here, this is the blend file. Um, you can see it's just some balls being pushed up and then the rigid body simulation kicks in and they just fall back down, which is really cool. It's kind of loopable, a little bit glitchy, but I, I, overall I think this is a very fun tutorial. I will be uploading my original result to Patreon. So let's jump into this and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's hop into Blender. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view by hitting one on a number pad. And with our default cube active, we're gonna press S, X, and then we're gonna press three. So S, X, three. We've now scaled it by a factor of three along the X and it's now wider. And when we're gonna tab into edit mode. And with all of this selected, we're gonna go G, Z, and hold in control or command if you're using Mac, and it'll snap. We're gonna snap it right to the floor. And you can see there's the 3D cursor, so we know that's the floor. So now we have this. Then we're gonna go back into our front of graphic view. And uh, let's go enable X-ray over here so we can select both these verts. So you can see they're both active. In our front of graphic view, we're gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna bring it up, and let's actually go type in the value. So we're gonna go G, Z, and let's type in 2.7 and press enter. And then we're gonna grab these two verts and we're gonna go G, Z, and we're just gonna bring it down. And we're gonna bring it down to, let's go about here. So um, you can have this angle be whatever you want. I might actually just grab these two up here and just go G, Z, and bring them down a little bit like this. So um, the slope is completely up to you, but roughly something like this should be fine. We're then gonna go into our right orthographic view by pressing three on the number pad. We're gonna select all of this and we're gonna go S, Y, and we're gonna go 0.5. I'm gonna press enter. And then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go Control R to add in a loop in the middle. You can see the yellow line. Just left click once and then right click to let go. And then come here to the loop cut slide options. Let's just make this two and then let's go S, Y and scale it on the Y and let's scale it like this. Let's go to our face select option. Let's select this face over here and holding in shift select this face over here. Let's go to our front of graphic view and then go E to extrude and just extrude it like so. And now we have this part. And this is where the balls can kind of run inside of. So let's tab back out. And for now, let's go Shift A. Let's add in a UV sphere. S to scale it down a little bit, and then G to bring it up. And we want this to be sitting inside of here. So we're gonna scale it even smaller so it can fit in here like that. And if you go to your right orthographic view, you can see this thing here is too wide. So let's just select everything in edit mode and go S, Y, and just flatten it a little bit till it's not touching, but just kind of a little bit closer to that ball, like so. Now we're gonna tab back out, and now we have this in place. So let's select this ball again. Let's just go G in our front view. Let's move it a little bit more up, place it over here, and then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, and we're gonna bring another one here, keep it really close to the previous ball, and then go Shift R two times to repeat that action, and now we have two more of them. So there's four all together. I'm gonna turn off the X-ray mode for now, and I'm gonna select this guy over here. I'm gonna to go to my modifiers and also give that a bevel modifier and then just bring that amount down over here. And we're also gonna go Control A and just make sure to apply the scale. In fact, select everything, then go Control A and apply that scale because it is gonna matter with the physics. And then we're gonna right click and just go Shade Smooth. Now let's just select our um, rolling thing here again, and let's just adjust that bevel we added, and you can add in more segments, but it's just gonna make it look smoother, and then we're gonna minimize this, and now we have that. So the rest is also really simple. Let's go Shift A, let's add in a cube again. Uh, let's tab into edit mode so we don't affect the scaling, and let's just go S to scale it down quite a bit, and then S, Z to scale it up like so. Tab back out, and then go G and move it up here. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same size as mine, but just tab in and roughly try and scale it, making it like a little paddle like this. And then you can go Shift A, add in a cylinder, and then G to move it up. We're still in edit mode, and we're just gonna move this down, placing it in here, and then select this and move it up on the Z. 
to make it a nice long paddle just like that now we have that but you can see if we go into a right or graphic view this guy is way too skinny so let's just select that cube in edit mode let's just scale it along the y like so we just want this kind of paddle here tab back out right click and go shade smooth and now we have this we're going to just rotate it ever so slightly and then g to place it over here and that's going to be the little paddle stopper that goes in and out and then all we have to do is take this thing and go shift d move it over here r to rotate and this time we're going to kind of line that up with this direction here just roughly do it by eye we want to bring it down more to about here and then we're going to tab into edit mode and with this thing selected we're just going to go r and rotate it like this and then go g to move it in here and maybe move it down a little bit here and then you can see here's the origin point let's just move it all a little bit closer like so tab back out and then just move it in object mode so we want it right here and once again just in case let's just go a to select everything Control a and apply that scale and with these what we're going to do let's just give them also a bevel and just kind of make it small just make them look nicer and let's do the same thing with this one here just give it a bevel and you can control that amount completely up to you but there we have that so that's looking really good what we're going to do now is we're going to add our physics and then we'll do our animation so let's make sure to save first of all i'm just going to save this to my desktop so let's select this ramp here let's go to our physics let's give it a rigid body and let's make it passive and let's go to the shape here and let's make sure to make that mesh and more importantly you want to go to the sensitivity and come over here and make it 0 0.001 and then select this paddle over here and let's give it the same thing we're going to make it passive we're going to make it mesh that's really important and we're going to make it 0 0.002 over here under the sensitivity that's important that's going to be the gap between the meshes when it simulates and let's grab this one here holding and shift select the one we just added it to press f3 and type in copy from and go copy from active and now it shares that same thing but because these are going to be animated we want to make sure we also come to our physics select them both and just enable animate it that's really important for these two so now if we actually select these spheres we can give them a rigid body we're going to leave that as active but we're going to come here and make it mesh and we're going to come here 0 0.002 under the margin sensitivity and now let's just select this one this one this one and lastly the one we just added that to f3 and once again type in copy from active and now all of these share that as well so if we now go to frame one which we are at and hit the space bar we can see this is what happens okay and they're not rolling down because this thing's in the way so we're going to do a bit of animation now so we're going to come over to frame 40 and on frame 40 with this guy selected we're going to go i and insert a location and a rotation keyframe and then we're going to select that keyframe and we're going to go shift d to duplicate and drag it to frame one so now we have a bit of a hold over here for 40 frames actually i just realized we don't want to hold so we do want it to be here on frame 40 so it's correct that keyframe here so just come up to frame 40 and let's enable auto keying over here and let's go g and just actually move it out like so and now it's automatically keying that so we go to frame one now and we hit the space bar we're going to see this happens like so okay and they're rolling and they should come down here and interact with this one but at this point what we're going to do is let's just grab this paddle and let's continue animating we're actually going to slide up to frame 122 and we're going to go i again insert a location and rotation we want to make sure it has a hold between 40 and 122 and then we're going to come here select the very first keyframe and go shift d to duplicate it and just drag it all the way to 150 where it's going to come back so if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar we're going to see this now it's going to be very slow at first because we haven't cached it in yet but you can see what's happening here it interacts and then this guy up here will eventually by the time it gets to 122 it'll come down which you're about to see in a second and there it comes down so what we want to do in that time is have this guy over here push things up so let's select that stopper here and uh, let's 
have a look. Let's drag all the way back. So we can see at about frame 70, if we actually, so we have to actually go to frame one again, hit the space bar and just watch it play out. So we can see at about frame 70, they touch down here. So let's come to frame 70 and let's go up a little bit to about 75, let's go 80. At frame 80, we're gonna go I, insert a location and rotation for this one. And um, let's now go over to frame 120 and let's go G and we have auto keying enabled. So let's go G and just move it up till it's right over here in front of this paddle, but not ahead of it, just over here. You can see it's automatically added in that keyframe. And let's go up to 145. Let's duplicate this keyframe over here. Shift D, drag it to 145. So we have a hold. And then let's grab the frame on frame 80 and go sh the keyframe here, go Shift D, and let's drag that over to 170. So it goes back like this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go and go all the way back to frame one. And now let's hit the space bar and let this simulate. So let's see what this looks like. So you can see it rolls. And once again, it's gonna be a bit slow. We haven't cached anything out yet. It's pushing it up, as you can see here. And it should stop right here. And then this little um, spatula thing comes down here. And just as that happens, this goes back. So the timing here is really good. And that's why we did it the way we did it. So let's turn off auto keying. And now let's go over to our um, rigid body scene properties. And first of all, let's take the end value here and just make it 170 as, as well. And that's what we're working with. And let's go over to our rigid body world under our physics scene properties here. And we're gonna go to the cache and make that 170 as well. And let's bake this into our scene. And you can see it's now baking this in. So it's gonna be a lot faster. And there we have it. It's now all baked into our scene and we're ready to go on to the rest of this. So we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. Once again, make sure Auto King is actually turned off and we're gonna go S to scale it up and then S, X, like so. Tab into edit mode and then just extrude this edge at the back and then just give this a bevel. You can make this backdrop however you want. It's just a simple um, stage here. We're gonna go to our front view. Let's grab this camera and delete it. And in our front orthographic, we're gonna go Shift A, add in a new camera. And let's move it up and let's move it back. Tab into camera view by pressing zero. And let's actually move back a bit more, but I'm gonna go to my camera settings and make the focal length 90. And I'm gonna zoom right back out like so for now. And I'm gonna go G, Z and just move it up like so. And while I'm in camera view, I'm gonna go Control B, just drag over this to limit the render here. Cause we're gonna go over to our render settings now and let's change it to cycles. And then go over to your render um, samples here. And let's make that 50 for now. So when we render, it doesn't take forever. And if we now go Z and we go rendered, we can see this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our world here and we're gonna to go to color. Let's change this to sky texture. Let's make it 0 0.2. And uh, let's just leave it as it is for now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in an area light and move it up like so. And we're gonna go here to our light settings. We're gonna increase the strength quite a bit because this is a large scene. And let's increase the size of the light here and let's go Z, let's go rendered. And this is what we have now. So we're just gonna kind of rotate it in a little bit. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it, rotate it in over here. You can do your own lighting setup however you want, but that's what I'm going with, like so. So now we're gonna go into our shading workspace, go into your front view and let's grab this background over here. Let's give that a new material. Let's drag this base color and let's type in checker and get a checker texture. And now we have that. You can change the scale to whatever you want. I'm gonna go with this. Go Z, go rendered. And now we can grab this thing over here, the, this, the ramp. And it already has a material because we made it from the cube. Let's just change the base color to orange. For my original, I actually added a material, so some textures, but we'll just leave it at this for now. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode for this one. And we're just gonna select these top bits over here. 
and in our material slots over here we're going to go plus assign it and go new and now we have a new material assigned here and if we go z and we go rendered we can now come over here and let's take the transmission all the way up to one and let's take this roughness almost down to zero and now we have a glass material let's tab back out now we're going to select these paddles let's give them a material we're going to make it metallic and let's make the base color a bit darker and bring down that roughness a bit and let's select the other paddle and give it that exact same material like so so now both the paddles have that material and let's select the spheres i'm just going to make them a orangey yellow material and i'm going to just make sure the rest of these have that same material so i'm just going to select them select that one last Control l and just link those materials so now they all have that same material and i'm going to bring the roughness down a little bit so at this point it's completely up to you how you want to go about this what you want to do but this is how i kind of did it make sure to save and um Maybe what we can do as well, we can go to select our camera. We can go to our camera settings and make the depth of field ena enabled. Grab the eyedropper and select the ramp. And then drag this f-stop all the way down. So now we have a nice soft focus in the background. Select that background and let's make these colors a little bit darker. I think that'll look a lot better, like so. And uh, play around with your environment lighting, the sun rotation, that's a good thing to try out. But the overall idea here I think has been captured. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, at this point, it's up to you to render it out as an animation. What you could do is go to your output settings, select the folder as always on your computer and change it to FFmpeg video, change the encoder to an MP4, and then you can just save it and go render and render out this animation. But that has been this tutorial. I'll quickly show you my original over here. And this is the one I'll be uploading to Patreon. It's the exact same thing I just showed you how to do. I only did a little bit more tweaking with the materials here. And I just animated the camera to follow along with this. But other than that, it's the exact same scene. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time.